His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi after departing the Kingdom of Bahrain following talks with His Majesty. President al-Sisi expressed thanks and appreciation for the warm welcome and hospitality he received, commending the positive talks held with His Majesty the King regarding bilateral ties and regional Arab and international issues of common concern. He highlighted the deep-rooted historic relations between the two countries, looking forward to further boosting them in all fields. He wished His Majesty continued health and happiness, and for the people of Bahrain further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Arabia Palace today a number of senior state officials. He expressed pride and appreciation for everyone who took part in honoring Bahrain internationally in all fields. He wished success to the President of the Asian Football Confederation, Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, and International Federation of Football FIFA elections. The Prime Minister also highlighted the tremendous efforts of the President of Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquity, Sheikh Hamid bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, who contributed in Bahrain's honor of attaining the Silver Award during its participation in Milano Expo 2015. He says such an achievement is added to Bahrain's international accomplishments, commending the efforts of Bahrain's people in the fields of literature, knowledge, politics, and economy. In regards to national and regional developments, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister confirmed that economic and security challenges facing the region and the world have grown to directly impact the development process. He confirmed the government is creating the needed tools to maintain its development through preserving security and safety and eliminating terrorism. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received the Arabia Palace today. Kuwait's Deputy Chief of Staff Sheikh Abdullah Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Sabah and Kuwait's President of the National Security Bureau Sheikh Thamar Al Ali Al Sabah visiting the kingdom to take part in the 11th IISS Manama Dialogue. The Prime Minister confirmed the special nature of Bahraini Kuwaiti relations, stressing Bahrain's keenness to open new horizons of cooperation and meet the aspirations of both countries and people. His Royal Highness wished Kuwait further progress and prosperity under the wise leadership, highlighting the importance of meeting among senior officials, such as the Manama Dialogue and unifying visions and ideas in regards to the security and stability of the region. For their part, the Kuwaiti officials expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his ongoing efforts to reinforce joint cooperation. They also commended the existing brotherly ties between the two countries' leaderships and people highlighting the kingdom's progress in all fields.
Minister's Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received the Qadibiya Palace today, the outgoing Egyptian ambassador to Bahrain, Isam Awad Safir. The Prime Minister highlighted the deep-rooted brotherly relations between the two countries, expressing satisfaction of the level of joint cooperation in various fields. He stressed Bahrain's keenness to expand fields of cooperation with Egypt for the best interests of both countries and people, commending Egypt's role in supporting Arab causes, as well as its supportive stance towards Bahrain. His Royal Highness wished Egypt and his people further progress and prosperity, lauding the efforts of Ambassador Islam Awal during his diplomatic term in the kingdom, and wished him continued success. For his part, the outgoing Egyptian ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for the support he received from the government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, during his term in Bahrain. He also praised the brotherly relations and joint cooperation between the two countries, as well as the mutual keenness to further consolidate them. The BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa met today the General Chief of Staff of Yemen, Major General Mohammed Al Maqdishi, and his accompanying delegation in the Kingdom to take part in the 11th IISS Manama Dialogue. The BDF Commander-in-Chief reviewed with the Yemeni officials brotherly relations between the two countries and ways of reinforcing joint cooperation and coordination. The meeting also discussed issues of common concern. The Minister of Interior, Lt. Gen. Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, received today the German Defense Minister Ursula Gertrude von der Leyen and her accompanying delegation. The meeting was attended by Chief of Public Security Major Gen. Tariq Al Hassan and General Director of the Interior Ministry Court Major Gen. Riyad Eid Abdullah. The Interior Minister welcomed the German official who was on a visit to Bahrain to participate in the 11th session of the Manama Dialogue highlighting importance of ongoing coordination to reinforce ties between the two friendly countries, especially security relations. He highlighted the efforts of the Interior Ministry to protect security and general safety, asserting that the democratic life and political and legislative reforms of Bahrain are part of the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He said that Bahrain is moving forward towards a bright and secure future for all segments in society through the reinforcement of human rights principles and protection of freedoms. The meeting discussed reinforcing joint efforts to fight extremism through active international terrorism fighting programs to dry up its sources. The two sides also discussed security cooperation and topics of joint security interest. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, expressed his thanks and appreciation to the wise leadership for the tremendous support given to the IISS Manama Dialogue which served as an incentive for the participants to come out with sound initiatives for the best interests of the region. In a statement marking the conclusion of the 11th edition of the forum, Sheikh Khalid paid tribute to the leadership for promoting Bahrain's approach of boosting global welfare and encouraging concerted efforts to meet this end. He said the leadership's support and follow-up on the major event was behind its success in yielding positive dividends at the regional and international level. He stressed that the Manama Dialogue is, is a continuation of Bahrain's pioneering initiatives to tackle issues impeding development efforts by fostering dialogue between experts and specialists to draw the roadmap for a better future. The Foreign Minister affirmed that the Forum had proved that change for the better and sur surmounting crises is possible, providing countries show a strong and sincere will to maximize achievements and tackle problems through a constructive dialogue aimed at promoting global security and stability. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, met with Singapore Senior Minister of State, Ministry of Defense, and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Mohammed Maliki bin Uthman. Sheikh Khalid commended the excellent relations between the two countries, confirming Bahrain's keenness to enhance communication with Singapore, which has achieved numerous development achievements. He said bilateral relations will witness further progress in all fields due to the mutual keenness of both countries to further consolidate them. For his part, Dr. Ben Uthman highlighted Bahrain's achievements in many fields and confirmed his country's keenness to expand cooperation with the Kingdom in all aspects. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with Lebanese Minister of Interior and Municipalities, Nihad al mashnouq the meeting discussed bilateral relations and ways of developing them in various fields for the best interests of both countries and people. 
Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed confirmed Bahrain's keenness to enhance cooperation with Lebanon. For his part, Minister al mashnuq expressed his country's keenness to reinforce ties with the kingdom in all fields, wishing Bahrain further progress and prosperity. Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa also met with the German Defense Minister Ursula von der Leyen. Sheikh Khalid commended the excellent relations between the two countries, confirming Bahrain's keenness to enhance communication with Germany, which has achieved numerous development achievements. He said bilateral relations will witness further progress in all fields due to the mutual keenness of both countries to further consolidate them. He lauded the role of Germany in maintaining the security and stability of the region and their efforts in overcoming their own challenges. The German defense minister confirmed her country's keenness to expand cooperation with the kingdom in all aspects. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, met with the Indian Deputy National Security Advisor, Arvind Gupta. The meeting included discussions regarding further ways to enhance joint cooperation, especially in the economic fields, and also discussed ways to combat terrorism. Mr. Gupta confirmed his country's keenness to expand cooperation with the Kingdom in all aspects. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met the Special Envoy for Yemen, Ismail Ould Sheikh Ahmed, in which both sides discussed the recent developments in Yemen. The Minister affirmed Bahrain's firm stance of restoring security and stability in Yemen. He also stressed the Kingdom's support to legitimacy in Yemen, as well as all initiatives that aim to achieve progress and prosperity to the Yemeni people. Bahrain television reporter Danielle Deporto attended the Manama Dialogue's final day of sessions and brought us this concluding report. The 11th annual Manama Dialogues, which officially concluded today, have helped high-level delegations from around the world to understand and develop a coordinated response to the pressing security and humanitarian issues plaguing the region and affecting the global community. Well, what's interesting is that at the beginning of this dialogue, uh, foreign ministers were meeting in Vienna to discuss Syria. And as soon as those meetings were over, they all jumped on a plane and came here. So that shows the importance both of real politics going on, but also the Manama Dialogue as a forum where they continue, if you like, in a different sort of way. I've also just been sitting on a panel about Yemen, where I hope we are just on the edge of de-escalating the military activity and moving towards political dialogue, probably in Geneva. So, if you like, Manama is in the middle of everything that's going on in two of the most difficult countries uh, facing both political instability, conflict, and humanitarian uh, challenges. It's been interesting that the prepared remarks by the government officials have been much more candid than they have been in the past. Um, and that was, I think, intentional by everybody. So that prompted a lot of the side discussions that we just talked about and uh, the candor with which people were discussing some very sensitive issues is helpful because that's what will move the process forward when people truly understand the positions uh, and the thought process, processes of, uh, of others. Topics of discussion range from specific regional conflicts like in Yemen and Syria to general trends such as preventing extremism and promoting broader development to stem humanitarian crises. As the world has witnessed with increasing frequency, these issues have been spilling across national and regional borders, affecting the global community and thus requiring comprehensive solutions. The priority for the refugee, uh, refugees, you need to solve the problem at the source. So first of all, we need to stop the war and reconstruct Syria and Iraq. We wanted to make sure that there's a link between security and development. And you see from the past, we have always this experience that we have a crisis situation. There's a humanitarian response to crisis. And then it's supposedly the crisis is over. And then we move into recovery and development. But now we have very long ongoing crisis and the people are living there and the people are suffering. Um, many people don't see opportunities, don't see a sense to stay in the place where they are. We have over 7 million people displaced in, internally in Syria. We have uh, another 4 million in the surrounding countries and now going to Europe. So, so the question is how can we create opportunities? Helen Clark uh, 
put a new term forward, which is called uh, emergency development. So how do we maintain the idea of uh, helping the people um, to see some opportunities and even in this very difficult situation where security is a priority, where it's the most important point, but in this situation people still have to go on with their lives. The security and humanitarian issues resulting from the many conflicts of the Middle East will indeed require a coordinated global effort to resolve. And this year's Manama Dialogues have indeed provided a very useful platform for progress at a time when it is sorely needed. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle DeForto. During the 11th Manama Dialogue, the Executive Director of the International Institute for Strategic Studies in the Middle East, Sir John Jenkins, commented on the remarks of Saudi Arabia's Foreign Minister, Adi bin Ahmed al-Jubair, in regards to Yemen and Syria. If you, if you think back to yesterday and to uh, uh, the Saudi Foreign Minister's uh, intervention, and it was fantastic he came, and he came from, from Vienna, especially to speak here. So he spoke about, about Syria. He talked about Iran as well, and he talked about, about Yemen. I mean, in a way, uh, these, are the, these are the big issues. Um, and it was interesting, I thought, what he said uh, about, about, about the way that, uh, that the Saudi uh, government and its GCC colleagues are framing these issues and framing the possibility of, of some sort of uh, of some sort of uh, uh, negotiating process or collective approach in which Iran has a role um, towards all of this. We saw, I think it was, it was um, there was a combination, I thought, of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of clarity and firmness of purpose on Syria, but also willingness and openness to the idea of a, of, of a constructive solution. And finally, the Shura Council held its meeting today, chaired by Mr. Ali bin Salah Salah. The council discussed the Services Committee report regarding the Representative Council decision on the draft law to amend some provisions of the private sector labor law. After studying the MP's recommendations and comments, the council approved the draft law.